What's up, everybody? Brad here, back again. It is Friday. It is the middle of May, and I am back from Seattle. It was a, it was a very busy week in Seattle. Lots going on. A lot of good conversations. A lot of digging around, if I'm honest. And um, good to be home. At least home for a little bit. I'll, I'll be home for the following week, and then I'm going, headed to Miami uh, for a few days. But uh, good to be back in the studio, back in the mothership, if you will. And you know, let's just dive in because there's a lot of things to talk about from Build that came out. Some things that some people I don't think realized, but uh, let's just hit the high notes here. So one of the big things that Microsoft has announced recently is Edge. And at Build, they talked a lot about Edge. Um, they talked about some of the new features that are coming. There's a new collections feature, which kind of allows you to aggregate some stuff and they make it much more easier to share from the browser. Uh, there's also a new privacy settings that are coming that are going to give you better control of over uh, the crap that gets downloaded on your computer, kind of behind the scenes that does the ad tracking. So you'll have basically wide open, um, a moderate, and then a really strict setting. And so that will be coming for you privacy folks, uh, which everybody should be privacy minded, uh, will give you better control over what basically Basically, websites are allowed to put on your machine to track your habits to make advertising more targeted or just to collect all the creepy stuff about you. Um, if you are on OS X or Mac OS, as I should say, uh, that beta leaked. So, uh, yeah, you can go out and grab that now. And also the actual beta for Windows 10 leaked. Now, if you remember, there's Canary, there's Developer, and then there's the most stable branch called Beta, which did leak. But candidly, if you're listening to this podcast or this video on YouTube or whatever, um, you should be very comfortable with the dev branch. Canary might be a little dicey. But even that's not too bad. But definitely you should be okay with the dev branch. That's what is what I use on a daily basis. And it is working out just fine. Other big announcements were, were uh, for the ugh, for the Linux fans out there. Or basically developer fans. A, a proper terminal is coming to Windows 10 built by Microsoft. And it features tabs of all the things. But this will be a big win. Because it expands across multiple language, multiple command line um, services. Like PowerShell and, and well, command line. And a couple other. Others. And so a proper terminal coming to Windows 10 with rich graphics and customizations and you can make it yours and you can add as many tabs as you want. And uh, this actually kind of explains some of the confusion right before build because before build when sets was kind of killed. Um, the developer of the terminal said, hey, yeah, we'll have tabs. But what he meant was he was going to say, we're going to have tabs for our experience, not for the whole entire operating system. And so what he said was true, because terminal does have tabs, but not everything does. So that's kind of where that confusion comes out. Hindsight makes things 2020. And so now we know what is going on. Uh, other somewhat interesting things, but it's a little too far out to get fully excited to get is this fluid framework. Now, what basically Microsoft is doing here is they're working to take applications like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint and be able to bring that content inside and outside the application. So you can be able to build web components that have these features built in. Um, and then the information also syncs dynamically. What they were showing was um, Teams, which is their preferred communication platform, and then a Word app that had a table open in it. And when you updated it in Teams, that Word doc was actually automatically updated as well. This looks really neat. And there's a lot to learn here, and there's a lot to see what's going on. And we'll see how Microsoft builds this out, because this is the future of Microsoft's Office 365 um, platform. Couldn't think of the word there. Yeah, future of Office 365. So we'll see how this plays out. We will see how it all shakes out. Um, and then the other big kind of announcement here is that the Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, they announced the second version, which is better, faster, stronger. But in this case, it actually contains a proper Windows or Linux kernel, I should say, built in. So um, if that's your cup of tea, that stuff is just getting better. And we should see uh, we should see some stuff here around the middle of June related to this. Now, the one thing Microsoft did not talk about at build was 19H2. So the release that is coming at the end of May or probably sometime early June, I, I would expect, expect sometime sometime around there. Um, is called 19H1. Now, there's a second build that Microsoft typically ships. They ship, typically ship two updates per year for Windows 10, and it comes in the fall, October timeframe-ish, and they have said nada, nothing, not a, not a feature hint, not a anything. And you might say, but Brad, Terminal, Terminal is part of 19H2. Aha, but it is not. It is not. It is actually a completely separate application serviced outside of Windows, so it could come at any time. Same with Edge. You could say Edge will ship with 19H2. 
in theory it could but again edge is serviced and maintained completely outside of windows so it doesn't it's not actually tied to windows so it it doesn't really come into that feature set so we know relatively little about 19h2 uh, what i keep hearing through the grapevines is that hey it's probably just gonna be like a patches and services thing and don't expect any major features because microsoft announced zilch uh at build this year so yeah yeah, keep that in mind. If you hear anything else about 19H2, let me know. Um, I do believe there is some stuff for the Xbox, but not for Windows itself. So, yeah. Um, other things announced uh, this week. Intel is going to begin shipping Ice Lake this uh, June. So that is likely going to be the next processor that is coming your way if you're going to be buying a new PC. Uh, they are promising two to three, or well, three times the wireless speed performance, two times the speed for video encoding and graphics, and two to three times the speed for artificial intelligence that over the previous generation. So we will see. There's been a lot of um, anxiety around Ice Lake because it's, it's kind of behind and Intel hasn't had a great migration over to that they are saying seven nanometer products will be coming in 2021 provided all things stay the same and they stay on track now that being said what's going to ship and surface we will find out soon enough um but yeah so we've got that going on another little interesting throwback that was announced this week now not in the same great detail that we might hope power toys if you remember back from the xp days is making a return but it's not going to include tweak ui which allows you to well tweak the ui but so far it's going to have a maximize uh to a new desktop widget and a windows key with showing off some of the shortcuts and all that stuff so power toys was big back in the xp days i hope that it gets some of the same love that it did back then because it just added well new toys and powerful features to the to the os without being again shipped with a major update so yeah those are some of the bigger, bigger announcements, but on the gaming side, which I know a lot of people are interested in. So Microsoft did talk about gaming at its build conference this year. Now it wasn't as direct as we might expect, but they definitely did. First off, I want to go back and put up uh, and show you a slide that they put up on stage where it showed off Satya talking about the key three platforms in Azure. We have Microsoft Dynamic 365, we have Microsoft 365, and crucially, Microsoft Gaming. Now, what this means is that when Microsoft looks at their cloud strategy as a three core pillar, gaming is a massive component of that. That should make you happy. That should make you excited. That should make you want to just love on Satya all you want because they are clearly and very explicitly elevating where they want gaming developers to work, play, and stream from. And this is their biggest development conference of the year and they are touting gaming they haven't done this in the past all that much or really all hardly at all and so for them to get up there and talk about gaming is a very big deal it's a very big deal they also talked very heavily about gaming stack about how developers can use this platform and dive into it and become part of the azure family if you want but realistically what they're trying to show off here is that microsoft cloud has a complete suite of services that are designed to make games better and streaming and integrated with xbox live they also talked about how playfab has over a billion accounts created for it and so while this was a developer show microsoft very clearly was making a pitch to the game to the game developers and the gamers of the world saying look azure is here azure is now set up to be a gaming platform and we are charging ahead full steam ahead into the gaming space with no signs of slowing down and i suspect that we are going to see a boatload of good action related to this stuff um, just think of all this as microsoft hyping up the infrastructure that is making next generation gaming possible and then at e3 they're actually going to show us the generation of gamings that is possible built on top of this information so very, very cool stuff. Um, also things that they showed off there, they actually showed off at the very, very end, they showed off a Minecraft game. Now I have known about this for a while, but it, I've been told it was delayed so many times. I think it potentially may have started off as a, a HoloLens game, but then they pivoted it over to kind of an AR on phone style game, which isn't all that surprising. Anyways, its code name is Genoa. So if you see anything references Genoa, uh, yeah, know that that is related to the Minecraft game. 
Now, I believe it's going to be a Pokemon Go style game where you have to go out and walk around and then go dig in the world and do all the good stuff. We shouldn't know too long. Uh, about a week, I think, roughly, is when they're going to talk more about this. But that is looking interesting. And other interesting things, if you've been wanting Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, that is now available in preview. So you can go grab those bits and potentially save yourselves a little bit of money, depending on how you're paying for things. It's not always a great deal. But in certain scenarios, it can make life a little bit cheaper. And it just kind of streams line that way you know when your subscriptions are due rather than having varied timelines about when things are going to pop so uh on the end note here people were giving me some grief on this for twitter because i tweeted out that there was going to be some sad news out of microsoft and there, there absolutely was uh laura butler one of my favorite people from microsoft uh is leaving she headed up one note and some other things she was a technical fellow which means it's a pretty big deal there were also some other layoffs in the sales org i believe and i've heard that there's a larger reorg in the works so uh, just keep all that in mind, guys. I didn't do a Q&A this week because I was traveling and I didn't have really time to look at all that. And I quite candidly just kind of forgot to put it up. I was exhausted when I got home. But this has been a quick wrap up. Uh, should have more stuff coming out next week. And uh, have yourselves a wonderful week.